Okay, here we go. We went over two special theorems or facts about a triangle last class on Tuesday about the exterior angle bigger, bigger than either two remote interiors and that the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. One more pretty big fact today. Before you leave today, you are going to find out that if you're going to form a triangle, you cannot have any three sides that you want. For instance, two 132 will never form a triangle. Okay, those three sides will never form a triangle. They'll come up short, right? They will not touch, right? And you guys are going to find out, well, what's got to be true about those sides for it to form a triangle, all right? Everybody on their table right now should have straight, uh, a rule around them because you're going to do some measuring right now. You're going to do a little activity to figure out what type of sides do I need to form a triangle. Now, you'll see the first one, the first step in your activity says, each member of the group should take turns picking three straws. Uh, I don't roll with straws, that's for sure. That's a little boring in my book. All right, so I brought in some licorice for everybody to cut up for me. All right, act like you've seen food before. All right, not like wild animals. When I give you the licorice, you have a job to do at first. All right, I don't care how you cut these, what you use to cut them. All right, but that's why I gave you the rulers to measure them because you need to give me a two inch piece a three inch piece, a four inch piece, a five inch piece, and a six inch piece. That is your first job right now. When I pass those out, measure them, cut them into these one, two, three, four, five different pieces. All right, so that's your first job when I pass it out. And then we'll talk from there. Now that you have your pieces cut out appropriately, here's your next job. You are going to take three of the pieces. In your table, you will jot down the three pieces that you have just taken, how long they are. And what you're going to do is you're going to try to form a triangle with them. All right? Now, a good triangle is one that connects all three vertices. If it goes past and has an exterior angle, no good. If it comes up short, no good. Okay, it's got to touch on all three vertices. If for some reason you guys are a little questioned and you're, you have arguments in your group, call me over. I'll let you know if it should form or not. Okay, please try to find two that do and two that don't. That's your goal right now. Two that do form a triangle and two that do not. All right, so go right ahead. Give you guys a little extra time here to do that. Take them, record them, see if you can form a triangle. If there's any kind of disagreement, call me over. Okay, anybody, any group want to give me one that will form a triangle? A set of three. Go ahead, this group right here. What do you got? Four, five, six. Four, five, six. That's a good one. So four, five, six. Give me a yes. How about another one? Go ahead, Amy. Four, three, four. Two, three, four. That should have been a yes. Uh, I'll take one more. Anybody got one more here? Go ahead, Justin. Four, five, six. Got it. Uh, two, four, five. Two, four, five. That's a good one. Yep. All right. Let me go to the nose now. Give me a set of three that did not form a triangle. Go ahead, Will. Three, six. What is it? Two, three, six. Yes, that should not have formed a triangle. Two, three, six. That's a big no. Others that did not form. There should have been more, Nick. Two, three, five. Yes, correct. Two, three, five. One more, Amy. Six, five, that should have formed a triangle. Two, five, six. Should have formed a triangle. Oh. Anybody have another one? Any others? All right, we'll leave it at that then. Now, I didn't memorize these to which ones were yes and which ones were no. I followed a rule, all right? Is there a pattern you can see between the sides that were yes versus the sides that were no? Is there any type of pattern you and your group could see there? Because again, I didn't memorize the numbers that did and didn't. I just know the rule, 
right? And that's what I'm going to try to force you guys to find the rule. Look at the ones that came out to be yes. Look at the ones that came out to be no. All right. Mike, you want to try to enlighten your classmates? Go ahead. Well, I could have went six, four, or five, or two. Wait, two, four, five isn't though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nick. Got it. Everyone, take a look. What's four and five added together? Nine. Bigger than the third side. But if you go down here, what's two and three? Not bigger than the third side. Two and three again is five. Not bigger than the third side. It's equal to. All right, so if you want to form a triangle, the sum of two sides when you add them has to be bigger than the third side. That is what we call the triangle inequality theorem, which says the following. In a triangle, sum of two sides is greater than the third side. That's the only way you're going to form a triangle. If two sides add up to be bigger than the third in every single case. All right, so what I did in number one, I gave you five different side, different sets of three. And I'm going to go around to five people right now and say, well, if I had side lengths of this, would it form a triangle or not? It's got to fit into the rule. Hugh, go ahead. What do you mean? Well, we had two, three, and five, right? What did we say about that? It has to be, look. Greater than, not greater than or equal to. Okay, greater than. All right, so let's go around the room here. Seven, ready to go? Who's got seven? Amy, all right, here we go. I got a triangle that's got side lengths one, two, and three. Will that form a triangle at all three vertices? Tell me why not. There you go, perfect. One plus two is equal to three. It has to be bigger than three. Now, let me make a point here on what Amy just said. I can I, isn't two plus three bigger than one? Isn't uh, three plus one bigger than two? But as long as you find that one that does not fit, not a triangle, okay? As long as you find one that doesn't fit the theorem, not a triangle. How about two, four, five? What are we thinking with two, four, five? Here we go, eight, two, four, five? Yes. Definitely. Do all, hey, do all the combinations. 2 plus 4, 5 plus 4, 5 plus 2. Always bigger than the third side. I can't find one that doesn't work. How about 5, 5, 6? 5, 5, 6. Here you go. 13, 5, 5, 6. Yes, it does. And going out to everyone, a little bonus. What type of triangle is that? Isosceles. Isosceles. Yep, 5, 5. Yep. 8, 13, 21. What are we thinking for this one? 14? Why not? 18 and 13 is tw 21. 8 and 13 is 21. It's got to be bigger than 21, though. And how about number 5? 10, 20, and 25. Form a triangle? Two? Yep. Yes, they will. Yes, it will. Any questions from you guys before we get into a little bit of tougher part now? Because here's what I'm going to do. I'll give you two sides now. What are good sides for a third? Or what are good numbers for a third side? Because we just found out it can't be anything. So let's take this first one. You have a triangle. and I'll just draw one out so we can see. Two of the sides are four and seven. Give me possible sides for the third one. Because, mate, you can't throw a hundo down here. All right? It's not going to happen. You know it's got to follow the rule. You can't put a one up here. One plus four is not bigger than seven. It's got to follow the rule. The numbers you give me have to follow a rule. And maybe we can see a little pattern here. Want to start us off, Sean? Four. four. Everyone, four, yes, no? Yeah, four plus four, bigger than seven. More, Mike. Six, would six work? Six plus four, bigger than seven. Seven plus six, bigger, okay. We got two here. Go ahead, Will. Five. Oh, why not, right? Maybe we're starting to see a little something here. Five works. Sean? Seven. 
Oh, seven works. This is going to have to end sometime, though. I got seven, Emma. Eight's going to work. Yep. This is going to end soon, but when's it going to end? Sean? Nine. Nine would work. Going to keep going, Max? Ten would work. Oh, now you want to stop. Yeah. Why wouldn't 11 work? Because 4 plus 7 is 11. Is 11. And let me go the other way. Why wouldn't 3 work? 3 plus 4 is 7. So this, these are the numbers I'm looking at right now. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But I do not want you to list them out all the time. It's going to be too time consuming. What I want you to do, and I'm going back to last year in algebra, is write these as... If you remember what's called a compound inequality, two inequalities at the same time, telling me it's from here to here. All right, the sides can go from here to here. So what I'm going to put in the middle of this compound inequality is the letter S for sides. Cursive letter S. No, it does not. It doesn't have to be an S. It can be an X. It can be a Y. It can be a C. All right. Whatever you'd like. Now I need your help, though. The sides are in between what? OK, well. That's, inc that's incorrect, though. Well, right, OK, right now, hey, right now, this, this is saying the sides are between 4 and 10, not including 4 or 10. But can it be 4 and 10? Okay, so how do I adjust this now? Amy? Okay, hold on. Hold that thought. That's incorrect. That statement's incorrect, unfortunately. Here is why. Ready, everyone? Put in a different color. Would 3.9 work? Would 3.9 work? What's 3.9 plus 4? Is that bigger than the third side? But the way you wrote your inequality is 3.9 included here. No. So that's wrong. So any thoughts on how I can rewrite this so I include every single possible value? Now, go ahead, Amy. Without the, correct, there we go. Now I have every single possible value. All right. Now, some of you, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this every time. I don't want to have to list out all the values and then play around with what works. You don't have to. There's a little trick here. I don't know if anybody sees it yet. Everyone ready? What two sides did I give you to start off? Four and seven. What were the numbers at the end of your inequality? Three and 11. Is there any way I can work four and seven? To... Yes, how can I go from the given sides to the numbers on the ends of the inequality? I can subtract them and add them. Yes. OK, that's all. I don't have to list all of them anymore. I don't have to think about what numbers should go at the end. There you go, subtract and add them. So let's do number three now that we know the process. 9 and 17. So at the very end, it's got to be greater than 8, but less than 26. We just saved ourselves lots of time because listing out numbers from 8 to 26 would have taken a while. And then while we're on that topic, how about number 4? Your sides are going to be greater than 9, but less than, yeah, that would have taken a while. Okay, but now that we know the little, and I don't even want to call it a trick because you guys just proved how to do it right here. Okay. Questions? 
All right, last one. It's on a graph, so I'm sure you know what's coming up. So go ahead. Go ahead and graph that triangle for me, QRS. Okay, question is, determine if these could be vertices of a triangle. Well, if it's a triangle, remember, it fits into our theorem, which says sum of two sides has to be bigger than the third side. How can I figure out distance formula? And I'm going to make this as painless as possible here. This whole row here, what side do you want to find? Well, I, that's not a side, Will, but QR. Okay, so you guys are in charge of the distance of QR. What do you guys want to find in the middle here? SR, go ahead. You guys are in charge of SR, so you, the groups over here are in charge of QS. Okay, so I'll only make you find one distance versus all three. So go ahead, find your distance, look around with people in your area, make sure you all match before you report it back to me. Same distance. Okay, here we go. Let's report back. Make sure you jot down. If you did not do that side, you weren't responsible for that side, make sure you jot it down. QR, what do we have? Square root of? 17. Good. SR, what do we have? Square root of 34. And QS, what do we have? Square root of 17 as well. Okay, let's talk. Let me just label my triangle with those lengths. So square root of 17, square root of 17, and the square root of 34. Okay, how do I figure out now if it is truly a triangle or not? Maybe it comes up short or goes on. Forms an exterior angle. What do we have to test? Sum of two sides. Let's pick two sides. Okay, so is square root of 17 plus the square root of 17, how does that compare to the square root of 34? And I picked this problem on purpose because some of you are just going to totally blow the whole uh, algebra unit you learned last year. Because some of you guys think they're equal right now without even looking at it at a calculator. They're not. Square root of 17 plus square root of 17 is not the same as square root of 34. Okay, that never was taught to you last year. All right, never. How many square roots of 17s do I have? No. So it would be two square root of 17 and the square root of 34. So go to your calculators right now. You know they're not equal. Tell me which one's bigger. Which one's bigger, Mike? So sum of two si is sum of two sides bigger than the third? Yes. Do we need to go and try square root of 34 plus the square root of 17? No, because we know it's going to be bigger than the square root of 17 if we're adding more on to it. All right, so this will or will not form a triangle then? This will form a triangle. All right, so therefore it will form a triangle. because the sum of two sides is bigger than the third side. Right. Questions from you? Anything else? We got over 10 minutes to start this homework. Let's get going. Yes, sir. Does that mean if all of us actually use triangles for, or like in this case, the QS and um, QR were the same, does that mean it would always form it? No, because take, ready? I'll 